Hey everyone, it's Guilherme and in this video we are going to learn how to set up Godot with C Sharp in both Windows and Linux. I'm going to cover the Windows part, Nathan is going to take over on the Linux and we're also going to see some of the improvements that were made from version 3.0 to version 3.1 and by the end of the video we're going to create a simple demo using C Sharp. Now before getting started you're going to need Godot mono version so head on to Godot, go to the download part and here Right below the standard version, you're going to find the mono version, which has C Sharp support. Depending on the type of your machine, you're going to have to choose between the 32 and 64 bit. In my case, I have a 64 bit machine, so this is the version that I downloaded. After that, you're going to need MS Build, and you can get that by going to Google. And I had to Google for Microsoft VS Build download. Here, you're going to find on the first link Build Tools for Visual Studio. And by the way, if you already have Visual Studio downloaded in your machine, you're not going to need to download this. When you click that link, you're going to be taken here where you can find Build Tools for Visual Studio 2017 and you can download this installer. After downloading and executing this file, you're going to be greeted by this page right here. And in my case, I have a modify here. You probably have something like install and you're going to have several different options. From all of these options, we are only interested in the .NET Desktop Build Tools. There are some optional modules here and in my case, I had to select the .NET Framework for development tools and after selecting this you can click on install and everything is going to be taken care of for you by this installer. After you've done this you are now ready to start creating games using Godot and C Sharp. As I'm the one using Linux here I'm going to show you how to get started with Mono and C Sharp development in Godot. So first on the download page you want to get the Mono version and the architecture depends on your computer for me, it was 64-bit. Then it's very important to get the Mono SDK. This is the tool, uh, the tool chain you will use to compile the C# -sharp projects. So click on the link here for Linux, and you will see instructions depending on your distribution. I'm using an Ubuntu-derived distribution called PopOS. So for me, the instructions are here. First, you want to add the repository using the command line. So you want to copy the instructions there, run them in the command line. It's going to add the repository and uh, to update all the packages that can be upgraded. From there, you want to install mono-development. It's going to install the entire SDK and all the dependencies that you need to make mono work on your computer. And then if you go back to the page at the bottom, you have a page to verify that your installation is working so that you can run the mono command, but also that you can compile some basic C sharp project. You can follow the instructions there, especially for uh, HTTPS connections using the C sharp command. But with that, you can go to Godot, the mono version, it should have the mono bottom docker in it and you can build the project anytime to verify that your game is working. Run it in the editor. For the external editor, you can use VS Code like Guilherme showed you on Linux. I'm using Emacs, so to set it up, you go to Editor, Editor Settings, and then you want to go to the Text Editor category, External, set it to On. I'm using the Emacs server with Emacs Client, I'm using these options, dash C, dash A, dash C to create a new frame, dash A, in case Emacs, the server is not running, it's going to start a new instance of Emacs. And then the file in brackets, it tells Emacs the full path to the file, the absolute path, which is going to make it run in Emacs. Now, after installing the dependencies and also Godot mono version, you can open it and you're going to be greeted by the project manager. And we can create a new project as we would as any other normal project. You can select the path and also give it a name. After opening the project, everything is going to look the same. I already imported some assets that are going to need to create our character and we can go ahead and open the 2D view part. We are going to create a simple demo here and all that we're going to have in this demo is a character that can run around. So we can create a custom node, which is going to be of type node, and we can rename this node to game. And I'm going to add the child to it, which is going to be a kinematic body 2D. I'm going to rename this kinematic body 2D to player. We can add to it a collision shape and also a sprite. 
On the texture, I'm going to drag and drop my blue character.png and also configure my collision shape by giving to it a shape which is going to be a circle shape 2D and I'm going to position it around the feet of my player. Now, as you can see, the process is pretty much the same. What's going to be different now and the different option that we have here is when we select our player and we click on attach script, we're going to have in the languages C Sharp available for us to choose from. So we can go ahead and select C Sharp, create a new folder, which is going to be called player, and save our script there. And then we can go ahead and click on create. Now you can see that Godot is creating a solution to us. This solution is a solution for a C Sharp project, which is normal in this case. And if we do not configure Godot, the script that we just created is going to be open on the default script editor. This is not optimal because Godot script editor was not made to be used with C Sharp, so we're going to be missing a lot of functionality. This means that if you want to use Godot with C Sharp, you should probably use an external editor program. There are several options, for instance, Visual Studio Code, Mono Develop, Visual Studio itself, Resharper, Atom, Sublime, and etc. In my case, I'm going to be using Visual Studio Code, which is going to need an extension like all other text editors, I believe. I haven't tested that, but if you're using a different language with a text editor in general, you're going to need an extension for the editor to work correctly. So to configure this, let's go to the editor and click on editor settings. You can go all the way to the bottom until we find mono. And here on the editor, we are able to select an external editor. And in my case, as you can see, I selected Visual Studio Code. As mine is already configured, I'm going to close the editor settings. And when I try to open the player script, Visual Studio Code is going to open. And here we can start to develop our game. The main differences that we have from using GDScript to using C Sharp is the fact that we are going to use camel case. So this means that when we are typing our functions, we are going to type it like this instead of the usual snake case that we have in GDScript. And all of the globals that we are used to are accessed using GD. So if you want to print, we are going to access GD dot, we're going to look for print, and here we'll be able to print whatever we want to. If you want to know more of the differences from GDScript to C Sharp, you can find them in the Godot engine docs. Now I'm going to delete all of this and we are going to create our own player script. And just as a quick note, the extension that I was talking about is the C Sharp extension for Visual Studio Code. So you can go to the extensions tab, search for C Sharp. Here I already have it installed. So you can install this extension and reload your Visual Studio Code if you are using that. And this is going to give you support for C Sharp on Visual Studio Code. If you're not using this editor, you're gonna have to do this process for whichever editor you're using. So you're better off just looking in Google how to do so. One of the things that we're going to need here is a movement speed for our player and we want to tweak that in our editor. This means that we're going to have to export that variable and to do so, we're going to use annotations, which is a concept that comes from C Sharp. So whenever we want to export a variable, we're going to use this syntax and down here we can type the name of our variable. In this case, it's going to be a public int movement speed, which is going to be equal to 250. As we are dealing with a kinematic body 2D, we will want to use our physics process to move our character. So we are going to override this function, physics process. And the reason behind using override, this is a concept that comes from C Sharp once again. And because the player is a class that is extending our kinematic body 2D, the physics process is an abstract function from our kinematic body 2D class. Hence the reason why we are overriding it here and giving it functionality. These are some concepts that revolve around inheritance and object-oriented programming in general, so we're not going to delve too much into them, but it's just worth noting so you know why we are using this keyword here instead of just typing public void physics process. Now we are going to create a motion vector which is going to hold the direction in which our player wants to move. Just like in type 2 script, we can inherit the types of our variables when we are assigning them. So we have the option to type in var motion is equal to a new vector 2 and this only works because we are already assigning a value to this variable which in this case is a vector 2 but we could have also typed something like vector 2 motion is equal to a new vector 2 both are correct and you can go with whichever you think suits best your code style in my case i'm going to leave it as var motion now we are going to check for inputs both for the horizontal and vertical axis so our motion X is going to hold the direction in which we want to move in the horizontal axis. And to determine which direction it is, we are going to use the input class. 
And here we are going to use the get action strength. And once again, because we are using camel case, we are going to look for get action strength. Here it's pretty normal. We pass to it the name of an action. In this case, it's going to be move right. And now we can copy this sentence and subtract from it the value we get from get action strength. But in this case, we're going to look for move left. We're going to do the same to motion Y, but in this case, we're going to look first for move down and then move up. The reason why we are subtracting move up from move down is because when we want to move up, we need negative values when talking 2D using Godot. Let's not forget the semicolon. And finally, we're going to call move and collide. And here we're going to pass to it motion dot normalized times our movement speed times our delta. We can save our script and we can go back to Godot. Now we are going to need to create our actions. So go to project, project settings, input map. We need move left, move right, up and down. And now we can go ahead and assign the events for our actions. With that in place, we can close, go back to the 2D view. Let's save our player as a separate scene in the player folder. Now we're going to move our player to the middle of the scene. Let's save our scene with the name of game.tsn. Press F5 to play our game, select our game scene. Our solution is going to be built. And if we don't run into any errors, we'll be able to move around using a C-sharp script that we just created. Now, this is just a simple demo, and if you want to dive deeper, you can go ahead and go to the Godot's docs, and there you can follow the step-by-step -step guide by Kids Can Code, which will have a link in the description of the video. Now, before ending the video, I just want to take a moment to highlight some of the improvements that we got in Godot version 3.1 using C Sharp. One of the first things, and it's something that we probably didn't notice, is that we didn't need a specific Mono SDK version because it now comes bundled with the download of the Godot Mono version, which is the SDK version 5.18. Back in version 3.0, we could not export games made with C Sharp. Now we can export them to Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. We also couldn't develop plugins and tools using C Sharp. Now we can do so, but experience is still not optimal. And finally, I'm going to go back to Visual Studio Code. We did not have generic methods. This means that whenever we wanted to get a node, for instance, we'd have to do something like get node. Here we would pass the path to the node. And we would have to cast this as a type of node that we are looking for. For instance, a kinematic body 2D. Now, this is not needed anymore because we now have support to generic methods. So instead of casting, we can just pass to the method the type of node that we want to get. In this case, as I just demonstrated, it would be a kinematic body 2D. Thank you so much for watching. As always, this project is available on GitHub, so you can go ahead and play with it if you want to. And I'll see you in the next one.